We are back with Congressman and Dr. Ron Paul to talk about Obamacare and what it is costing the country. It has been under fire since day one, and a lot of money has been spent so far. Congressman, you think we should just throw it away and start over again? We should have never started with it, but we should have never started government medicine a long time ago. And this is just the, the worst example on what it would lead to. And most people predicted this would happen. So if we, you know, we're looking at the computer problem and blaming the computer, but it's the system that they're trying to impose on it. It'll be just as messy as trying to sign up for it. So it's a mess. It's very expensive. And it's, uh, it's corporate medicine. That's why the corporations are very much involved in this. Why is it corporate medicine? Because it feels like government medicine. Well, the government and the corporations are, corporatism is a mixture of government and uh, big business. So the insurance companies are involved, and they're not complaining too much because they were expecting to get a lot of customers, and all of a sudden now they're, t they're uh, taking these policies away. They have more leeway and raising rates and, and all, all these things. So the drug companies are very much involved. When the Republicans were in charge, you know, they had prescription drug programs. That made the drug companies happy and a lot of patients happy, and they just uh, both parties have expanded the role of government in medicine. My argument against all of this was uh, made a long time ago because I thought the most important thing I could do as a physician or as someone in politics was to protect the doctor-patient relationship. And that's long gone. And certainly everybody who's trying to understand Obamacare, they're finding, oh, they told us we could keep our own doctor. You know, all those arguments. It just isn't true. The more you get involved with government management, it's central economic planning at its worst. And all you do is higher prices and you'll get poorer quality care. And that's where we are well, the, today. The Nobody's going to be happy. The president says we're off to a bumpy start. But over time, you know, we are going to end up with more people having health insurance that they can afford and being able to see doctors. You don't think that once the dust settles that we'll have a better system? Well, yeah, that, that's possible, but you have to think of the quality. A lot of people saying, well, there's already a lot of people who have signed up, they're on their Medicaid, but uh, a lot of people aren't going to be happy with Medicaid. You know, uh, the doctor shortage will increase and the lines will get longer and quality will go down. So you can say, oh, yeah, they, they had insurance, but right now, even from my own private insurance companies, I've had notice that, you know, be ready in January, the rates are going to be raised, we have to reassess your policy and what we're going to cover. Yeah. So. Uh, there's a lot of people who are going to be very, very unhappy to just say you're insured uh, won't uh, please a lot of people. Besides, this is one of the biggest problems in this argument is they've destroyed the definition of insurance. You know, uh, this is just medical How? management and promise care. Well, you, if you can't dictate to an insurance company who they can insure, and they say, well, prior conditions, you can't take this into consideration. Well, that's sort of like saying, well, I'm 75 years old now. I want to. I haven't had my life insurance taken out, and now I have diabetes and high, high blood pressure. I'm going to take out life insurance. Oh, well, we can't rule out any prior conditions. That's about the way it is. It isn't insurance. The companies don't measure this, uh, measure the, the risk involved. So what because is it? If, if it's not insurance, what would you call it then? Because I understand your point, but if it's not insurance, then what is it and what's wrong with that? It's just government managed health care through the corporations, uh, you know, making some money off it. It's uh, it's government uh, regulation and forcing companies to do things where they can make the best deal and pretend that they're taking care of all the patients. But it's it's not free market medicine. It's not socialized medicine. It's just uh, one of the worst things because it's so tempting to say, well, well now we don't believe in socialism and we got to be cautious a little bit at a time. And, you know, even if Republicans take over next year, which uh, it, there's a chance of that, they're not going to get rid of Obamacare. They might get rid of some of it. It might be made better, and hopefully we would get at least an opt-out provision. This is the only thing that I think could save us from ourselves, is no matter what program we have, we ought to always give the people the right to opt out of the government system. And then it wouldn't be so bad. Already we have a lot of people opting out of the medical care system. I interviewed a doctor the other day. They said that he can do in a private clinic a $30,000 operation for $3,000. He just doesn't take any insurance, doesn't yeah. talk to the government, and he's flooded with patients. Yeah. Because that, the, most of it's overhead. That's, that's the direction and, and that's we're what going we have to, Yeah. That's, that's how we get, have to get rid of that. Dr. Paul, thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate your time again. Thank you. I hope you'll come back soon. Thank you. Nice to be with you.